Game battles may provide a competitive forum, but CEO Matthew Bromberg says it's not his job to be the police. That, he says, is up to parents. The reality is kids have to find balance in their lives around the things that they love and they're interested in. And I think the parents have the pri obviously have the primary role in helping kids do that. I mean, I I'm not sure what you're suggesting. Should we make a rule that you can only practice two hours a day, and then how, how is it that we would enforce that? I think what people are, are pointing to you and saying is that, you know, you, you, uh, you are making this so desirable, and you've, you and your corporate sponsors are creating a situation where parents may not be able to control this. I've never heard it before you said it. Kids love to play video games, and, part, and we're, we're enhancing that experience, but I, you know, with the notion that somehow we're uh, you know, single-handedly, we, we become single-handedly responsible for what teenagers do, I think is, doesn't make any sense. Three weeks after Brandon Crisp disappeared, police called his parents to say they'd found his body. Whatever his plans were, wherever he was running to, he hadn't gotten very far. He was found at the base of a tree just five kilometers from home. The autopsy would find he died from severe trauma to his chest, consistent with a fall. As the story of the kid who left home because of a video game went international, some retailers decided to cancel launch events for another first-person shooter game, out of respect, they said. It's very important for us as an industry to take responsibility for educating um, kids and parents about video games as opposed to just sort of putting them out there. You talk about the importance of education and yet probably the, 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 the finest teaching moment that happened in, in recent history was when Brandon Crisp died. And yet your organization was silent. You chose not to talk about the Brandon Crisp story. Why is that? First of all, I, it's, it's a devastating, devastating um, situation for the family. It's not something that, you know, our, that, that we felt we had a, a role in commenting on because it, it, it was a family situation. It had nothing to do with our industry. You don't want to talk beyond that? No. I, I don't think I have anything more to say beyond that. It really didn't have anything to do with our industry. Last November, the Crisps said goodbye to their son. In Brendan's memory, they decided to set up a foundation to help fund kids who want to play sports, real sports. It's probably the hardest thing as a parent to, to not give your kids things. And uh, that's what we should have been like. You wish you'd never given them the Xbox. Like other parents, we've taken the easy way out too many times, and uh, this is what it results in. I'm not saying we're bad parents. I think we do what a lot of other mm -hmm. parents do. I, I bet you most parents had had these children playing these games didn't realize this world existed. A month after Brandon's death, Major League Gaming held its biggest tournament of the year in Las Vegas. Gamers from around the world watched as the winning team devastated the competition to become the latest Top Guns. When we interviewed Steve and Angelica Crisp for our documentary, they did not yet know that their son had died. We've kept in touch since then, and they report that they have been overwhelmed by the large number of parents who've contacted them to share their struggles with teenagers and video games. The Crisps have dedicated themselves to helping other families. As we mentioned in our report, they've set up an endowment in Brandon's name. You can find out more about this and about our story on our website. It's all at cbc.ca slash fifth. Stay with us now for more of the Fifth Estate. We'll be right back. Why is the Prime Minister saying Canada can't defeat the Taliban in Afghanistan?